Someone's been unleashed. Is that too corny? Is that too corny? Yeah. I thought so. Sorry about that. Ah. Our family loves summer vacations. We live all year sometimes for summer vacations. And we camp. We're big campers. And so every summer we spend at least a week with Kim's extended family. Some of you know them. And there's five or six families together all at a, a campground. We all, all bring our dogs. And we love dogs. We all have dogs. We almost all have dogs. And we love dogs. Sometimes it feels like there's more dogs than people. Uh, but, you know, when you camp and you have dogs, you have to keep them on a leash or you have to keep them contained in some way. You can't, they, they, they can't just run free. So we often, every couple of days, we take the opportunity to go take the dogs to a park or to a, a ball field or out on a hike where we can unleash them and let them run. And uh, we have the best time watching our dogs run unleashed. So here's a, here's a picture of, of one of our best memories. Uh, we were out camp, hiking Rock Creek, and we turned. This is Rose and Bo are the two border collies, and they're chasing Jack. And um, some of you know these dogs. These, the, these aren't ours. They're Kevin and Melissa and Keith and Nikki's dogs. But um, they were running through the open meadow, and we were laughing so hard. It was so funny. Some of us laughed until we cried. It was so funny. And part of what's funny is, you know, border collies, they're bred to herd, right? To herd sheep. So Jack, poor Jack here, he thinks he's just out for a a run with a couple of friends, but he doesn't realize he's being herded right here by, by Bo and Rose. But, but we, as their, as their owners, we love to set them free and let them run and pl- play unleashed the way they were designed. And I love that image as we think about the unleashed life for us because God has created us to live unleashed. And when we experience the unleashed life, God laughs. God enjoys it so much. When we are experiencing life unleashed. And, and for, uh, for us, unleashed means being unleashed from sin, unleashed from fear, unleashed from our past, or unleashed from legalism, or unleashed from anxiety, and free to love, to give, to pray, to obey. All of those ways that God has invited us to live. You know, the Lord has been uh, changing my paradigm of the Christian life. Because I I have, most of my life, I've believed that that all of the invitations to to do certain things in in my Christian life, like pray, read the Bible, be a part of a Christian community, to give, I've often kind of imagined those as additions. You know, like things we add on to the Christian life. Like I was, I was saved over here, and then there's all these things we add on to that. But God is changing my paradigm, and I'm, I'm beginning to see that all of those invitations aren't additions to the Christian life. They are invitations to experience the real life, that we're actually called to live into all of those activities that, that really fulfill what it means to live eternally, to live abundantly, to experience the unleashed life. And I love, if you start reading through Scripture, you see uh, descriptions of the unleashed life. And, and the Bible doesn't use the word unleashed, but it uses the concept. For example, Galatians 5, verse 1 says, it is for freedom that God, that Christ has set us free. So we're, we're designed to live a free life. And the point there is, again, free to love, free to share, free to give, free to obey. That we're released from the things that bind us, the restrictions, the leashes of our lives. To live the life that God has created us to live. Um, passages like uh, John 10.10 10, where Jesus says, I have come that you might have life and have it abundantly, have it to the full. 
But there's a kind of life that you were designed for that is beyond your imagination. And we're invited to step into that. And that's what we're calling the, the unleashed life. We're invited to live free from the, the sin and the self-centeredness and the rebellion that holds us back. We've talked, I've talked about shalom. Shalom is living the unleashed life. God has created us from Ephesians 2. God has created us as his works of art in order to live unleashed, to do the things, to live the kind of life that, that we were created to live as his human. See, we were not designed by God to live restricted by our sin and our selfishness. We're born that way. But then at the point that we say yes to Jesus, it's like, it's like the handcuffs are, are unlocked. It's like the chains are released and then we're free to live unleashed, to live for God and for God alone. So we're talking in this series about unleash, experiencing the generous life. And there's another image that I have uh, that I want to share with you besides, besides the dogs running free. And so, you know, I know we're not dogs. We're, we're much more than that. You get my point. But we're supposed to experience the same kind of joy and the, and the Father is experiencing joy when we experience, when we live the unleashed life. The second image I want to share with you is of a massive pipe, a pipe that, through which God's blessings flow. So if you can imagine, I don't know, like a six-foot pipe, massive pipe, that God's blessing is flowing through. And God is blessing the world, blessing us and the world, and the flow is coming through this pipe, but there's a valve. And in God's wisdom, He has given us the invitation to control this valve. There's something, the way God has wired His partnership with us, that He says, the blessing is for me. I, it's my, I'm the source of all blessing. But you have a measure of control, and you can restrict or unleash the blessing. And for example, um, there's several examples in Scripture. Uh, we talk, Ephesians 2 talks about we are saved by grace through faith. Now it's God's grace, but it's our faith. So God's grace is unlimited. It's just unleashed toward us, but, but our faith turns the valve. We, we release God's grace into our lives when we, by faith, open the valve to receive it. Scripture talks about forgive and you will experience depths of God's forgiveness. See, once we forgive someone else, we open the valve of God's blessing to us. In terms of, you know, as we love other people, as we uh, give our lives to other people, that opens the valve so that God's grace and love flows into and through us and into the world. And I love the image that Dave shared with us last week from John chapter 7 where Jesus says that as we come to experience this unleashed generous life that streams of living water will flow from us. Now we, we know that Jesus is the source of, of water, spiritual living water, and we receive it, but Jesus says it doesn't stop there. We don't simply receive it. It flows from us and out into the world. But it's, but it's our turning of the valve through faith and love and generosity that opens God's pipeline, God's uh, rushing blessing into us and through us and out into the world. And this is true in, the, in terms of generosity. When it comes to genero being generous and whether we're talking about, gen we're talking about generous lives, not just finances, but all of life? Are we living generously with our, our love, with our time, with our um, grace toward others, and also with our resources? So, so God, Scripture repeats this, and I'll show you some verses in a minute, where God is the source of all good gifts. And then He comes to us, and, and we're, we're holding the valve. And God says, now if you trust me, if you trust me, release the valve. Open the valve and let my blessings flow. I think that's what Malachi chapter 3 is saying when God 
is speaking to the people. Now, at this time in Israel's history, they were not experiencing an unleashed life. They were very, very much restrict, restricted by their own sin and their own rebellion. And God gives several examples of what, why they're restricted. But one of them is in their lack of generosity. And he says, test me in this. And by this, he's talking about being generous, giving to God. And he says, if, test me in this, in your generosity, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. And, and it's like he's saying, turn the valve. Watch this. Turn the valve and let me bless the world through you. And I, we're not talking about simply hoarding. We're not talking about getting rich ourselves. The scriptures always frown on the desire, the motivation to be, to be rich or to hoard. I mean, this, Jesus tells stories about a, a, you know, frowning on those who, who live just to receive. If you understand these verses in the context of the whole Bible, the whole Bible teaches us that we are about being blessed in order to bless others, not to keep for ourselves. So whatever we've been blessed with is for us to share. We become a conduit. And as we open that valve, that conduit, we become even greater sources of blessing. In the New Testament, this is what Jesus talks about in Luke. He says, give Open the valve and it will be given to you. Not to hoard, but to flow through you as a blessing. The writer of 2 Corinthians says, and 2 Corinthians 9 is a wonderful chapter. You may want to study that this week. It's a great chapter on generosity. But Paul, the writer there, says, if you sow generously, you'll reap generously. If you open the valve generously, the blessings of God can flow generously through you. Later in that same chapter, the writer says, God, God is able to bless you abundantly. God has all of this blessing that's in this pipeline, and he wants to bless you so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. And that last phrase, that's the, that's the point. It's that, that that will flow through you so that you will be living out and working out the life that God has for you as a blessing to the world. Two verses later, you will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. You get that point? The reason God blesses you is for you to be generous, to be a blessing. But, but you have to start by, by opening the valve. And, and I know sometimes that's hard because we don't, you know, we, we think if I open that valve and all the blessing goes rushing through, what if there's no more blessing? What if, it, what if that's it? We have to trust, we have to trust that God is the source of never-ending blessing. And that as the more we open that valve and experience God's blessings flowing through us, there's an endless supply of God's blessing. The, the fear that we experience is because is we can't see very far up the pipeline. You know, we don't know that the pipeline is endless and that God's resources are endless. So I want to encourage you, wherever you are in your life, in terms of being unleashed and experiencing the generous life, take a risk and open the valve. And if it's right now, if it's just a trickle, turn another half crank and let some more flow. If it's flowing pretty good, open it up and let more of it flow and maybe you even want to stick it dynamite in there and blow the whole valve up and just let it explode all over the world trust it's an issue of trust trusting that god has all of the blessing that you need and wants to bless the world through you so i want to share some of my own experiences with this so part of what we're doing in this campaign is is encouraging you with, uh, with personal testimony. And so um, you're going to get some of mine today, if that's all right. And I, I must confess to you, I'm, I'm very nervous about sharing, talking about money, talking about my own experience with money. And I, 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 I confessed that, and um, Kim said, well, tell them you're nervous. So I did. Uh, and I know I'm going to make some of you very uncomfortable. Uh, some people told me that after the first service. 
so that's okay. Just recognize that it might be uncomfortable for you. It's also uncomfortable for me. And, and I, 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 I ran these stories through by some people that I really trust because a part of my discomfort is we're not used to talking about money publicly like this. Uh, and so I, I talked to Dave, whom I trust, and I talked to the preaching team, and I shared these, these stories, and, and I asked them to help me with my motivation. What's my motivation here? My motivation in sharing my own stories of generosity, I have two, two motivations. For my first motivation is I really want to give testimony to God. I really want to glorify God. Just as, you know, when you, when you pray and God answers a prayer, you want to share that with others. It's so encouraging to others when you share. You know, I prayed for this person's circumstances and God intervened. So my first motivation is to just share, share what God has done in, in our lives to give him praise and glory, right? So please, direct praise and glory to him. The second motivation is, I want to be an encouragement to you. Because God has challenged us, challenged uh, Kim and me to step out of our comfort zones in terms of generosity. And so I'm sharing this, and your, the way God challenges you is, is going to be different. But I really want to share this as an encouragement to help some of you take a risk and to get, to get unleashed, to get unstuck. Because as Dave shared last week, if you were here uh, that he and Anne's giving, their generosity had become routine. Ours had, ours had too. And I think that what God has done earlier this year in my life has uh, prepared me for this Unleashed series. Because we were in a routine. And I think God shook us, God dislodged some things in us to help us walk right up to the edge of yikes, which is the image Dave gave, gave last week. And so, I'm going to encourage, I'm going to invite you today right up to the edge of yikes. And it's going to look different for you than it did for me. So Kim and I grew up in, uh, we had examples. Our parents both, both were very generous. So we, we had an example right from the start. We've been married 26 years. And right from the start, tithing was easy. For, I mean, that was a no-brainer. And we trusted that if we gave to God the first 10%, that he would provide for us out of the remaining 90%. But we learned a couple lessons. One, that generosity is contagious. It's contagious. If you're around generous people, it will help you be generous. And it's even contagious in parts of our lives. Like some people will say, it's easier for me to be generous with my time than my money. And my response is, that's great. But it's contagious. And as you are generous with your time, it will flow over into the rest of your lives. We're not to live compartmentally. We're inviting you to generosity of all of life. And so God began to, is still in the process of doing that in our lives, where he's in, infecting with his generosity different areas of our lives. And there are some areas that uh, are harder. That, that there are some areas of, of your lives for which generosity is harder. And there are some areas of your lives for which generosity comes very naturally. What I would say is, as you practice generosity, it will become contagious and it will infect all of your lives. The second lesson we learned gen- about generosity is we, be- we began to realize that generosity grows. Just like love grows and patience, the fruit of the Spirit, joy, self-control, kindness, gentleness. As we walk in relationship with God, God helps us ex- expand the character qualities of Christ in our lives. And we become more like Christ, so we're more loving now than we were a year ago. And we trust that we'll be more loving in a year than we are now. Well, generosity falls into that same category with us. So we began right from the beginning to say, you know, if God can, if we can give to God our first 10% and he can, he can provide for us out of the remainder, the remaining 90, then next year, let's increase it a percent. You know, if we give him the first 11, he can surely take care of us out of the remaining 89. And let's increase it, let's increase it every year a percent. God would give him the first 12%, and he'd take care of us out of the remaining 88 and 13 and 87 and so forth. And what was so fun was to watch God release his blessing as we simply took small steps of faith. And, and that's what I'm inviting you to do during this campaign. You know, wherever you are, 10% is overwhelming for some people. And so wherever you are, if it's 20, I I had a great conversation between services with a man who said, when I started coming here, I was given $20 a week, and then I was challenged to step out of my comfort zone, so I went from 20 to 50, and he goes, and God provided. 
And he said, so I went from 50 to 100. And God provided. And he said, and eventually, over time, I worked up to a, a, a tithe, and God provided. And so it's a process of taking step after step. And what Dave asked you to do last week is commit to commit. Will you commit to commit? So a couple more story, personal stories. Um, several years ago, in the, it was in the fall, end of the year, you know, when you start getting uh, um, sometimes end of the year bonuses or you start to get uh, end of the year appeals for ministries. Ministries will send you uh, an appeal letter at the end of the year. And so we, you know, October, November, something, we wrote a check. I think one of your kids sent us a letter. We're going on a mission trip. Will you support me? So we wrote a check, <laughs> sent it. The next day, we get a check. Surprise check. Didn't know it was coming. Wow, that was awesome. And I felt God laugh, laugh. I felt God's laughter. I felt God go, ha, ha, what are you going to do with this? So shoot, another opportunity came up. So we wrote another check, sent it off. Next day, another check. And this happened like five times. Now, this hasn't happened again. It only happened, that pattern only happened once. But we just couldn't outgive God during that about two month season. Every time we wrote a check, a surprise check showed up. And, and I, I don't, I, you know, I'm not, this is not necessarily um, a, a formula. That's not what I'm saying. It's not what I'm asking you to believe. I'm just saying that while we were doing that and we were watching your kids on the mission field and we were watching ministries be blessed by our generosity, we felt joy. It was so fun. And I felt God laughing. I just felt him just laughing, saying, watch this. You can't outgive me. No matter what you do, you cannot outgive me. The pipeline is always full. And it was such a fun experience. I mean, we got, we got a letter a couple years later from the IRS and said, we don't believe you gave that much money. And, and I, so I fortunately had all the paperwork and sent it back in. Never heard from him again. Uh, but that was just fun to be a conduit of blessing. And I felt God's laughter. The last story just happened this year. And I think now, as I look back, I think God was, sh- was dislodging us to get us prepared for this, for this uh, generosity conversation. Um, I, I had a sense, and this is kind of how God speaks to me in my life. I had, a, God, I had a nudge. I don't hear God's voice. He nudges me and it puts impressions in my in my head so i had a sense that i was supposed to write a big check and and it was a big check and and um you know when those impressions come i i i wait usually i wait in prayer uh, and go was that just me or was that from the lord but a couple of weeks of kind of praying through that i felt god say no i'm serious i'm serious and and um I think we had been spiritually prepared for this, but it was a big, it was a big check for us. And it was a ministry opportunity for God's kingdom that, uh, that was way past the, the yikes step. And so uh, we decided, wow, okay, uh, let's do that. So we, we, we wrote that. And it, it was like, I, and this is where I'm uncomfortable sharing, it was like, it was like a month's income. And I'm like, okay, God, wow, that was a yikes moment. A couple weeks later, I get another impression from God to write another big check to another ministry opportunity. Now, this one wasn't quite as large. It was only about half as much, which is still big. And I'm like, God, what are you doing? This is, uh, this is taking me beyond my comfort zone. I'm way outside. Um. But I said, okay, I mean, this time it took me less time to, to make up my mind, to trust God. So I wrote the check. The next day, the next day, we, we, everybody in our neighborhood gets a letter. And in our neighborhood, we're, uh, it's a, it's a, there's a, we're in a, a water, we're all stockholders in a water system from which we get our water. And the, st- and the company says, we're selling, we will buy your stock in the water company. And the amount that they are going to give us was just a few dollars less than what I had just given away. And I'm just like, God, are you laughing again? 
Is this a joke to you? This is funny, isn't it, God? You love this. God loves it when we step outside of our comfort zone. And when we live unleashed. Now look, I don't share that to make anyone feel uncomfortable or guilty. You're not more uncomfortable than I am sharing it. I share it to say, you can trust God. I'm not telling you that he's going to do that in your life. That's not my point. I'm telling you what he did as a testimony. And it makes it so much easier to trust God. When, when Unleash comes along and we begin to think, okay, well, shoot. Uh, is there an asset we need to sell? Is there an asset we need to transfer? Is there a, a major purchase that we need to postpone? What do you want us to do, God? And if we've lived in a relationship with God in which God has continually proven himself time and time again to be the source of all good gifts, to be the source of blessing, unlimited source of blessing, we know that we can trust him to be the open conduits and channels of his blessing to others. So in a minute, I'm going to invite us to pray, and, and I'm going to ask you to do what Dave asked you to do if you were here last week, and that is just to commit to commit. Just to commit to ask the Lord, Lord, what is it? And you're, he's going to tell you to do something different than he's going to tell me. But, I, but I'm confident there will be the same call, the same call to take a risk, the same call to step out of our comfort zone, the same call to experience a deeper level of generosity and to, to live the unleashed life because that's, that's the way God has designed us to live. He loves it when we're running free, when we're living outside of what is reasonable, but we're in his realm, experiencing his blessing as we become generous. Would you pray with me? And just begin to ask the Lord, Lord, where, where am I restricted? Is it fear? Is it disobedience? And how do you want me to respond? Lead us, Lord, right up to the edge of yikes. And for some of us, that's a, that's a first step of generosity. For others, it's a step of regular generosity. For some of us, it's, it's a radical commitment to generosity. But thank you, God, that you are the source of all good gifts. That your blessings never end. We cannot outgive you. We invite you to give us the courage to turn the valve and to begin to let the blessing flow. For the sake of the world and for the glory of God. In Jesus' name, amen.